welcome to the course module 4 machine learning myself meherpa namas assistant professor department of computer science and engineering yachikri school of engineering and technology so in this module we are going to study what is decision tree and what are the different selection measures to construct a decision tree like entropy information gain and the different algorithms to construct decision tree like id3 id3 stands for iterative dichotomizer tree and cart stands for classification and regression tree and what is overfitting and how we can uh, reduce error pruning and uh, what is a method to avoid the missing attributes then the gain ratio so these are the things you are going to study module 4 and the second part uh, will discuss more details about neural networks and the perceptron activation function and how we can train a feed forward neural network by using back propagation learning algorithm so let's see each uh, topics in more detail in the coming slides so what is decision trees a decision tree is a flow chart like a tree structure and here we can see three types of node one is called internal node and second one is called branch and third one is a leaf node so internal node which do not attest on an attribute and branch represent an outcome of the test and the leaf node represent the class label so here you can see one tree our question is is a person is fit so our root node is considered here is age and less than 30 so if it is age is less than 30 then we have to uh, further more we have to do it that is uh, whether that person eats a lot of pizza so if it is yes then you can say uh, the label is unfit and uh, if the age is less than 13 is no then you need to go for uh, further iteration that is we have to check one more feature that is the exercise in the morning and the answer is yes we can say the person is fit if it is no means the person is unfit so here the different class labels are unfit fit fit unfit so here the two class labels one is fit another one is unfit and here our root node is age is less than 30 and here the leaf node which represent the class labels that is fit and unfit and each branch will represent the outcome of the test so in order to make uh, which one will be the root node so which feature will be acted as a root node that is a question so uh, how we can determine or how we can uh, find uh, which one will be the root node so there are different algorithms are already developed to identify which one will be the best features for constructing a decision tree so we will discuss more details about the different algorithms well later So let's see the standard definition of decision trees. A decision tree is a hierarchical model for supervised learning. So, uh, as we already explained, most of the classification algorithms are uh, belong to the supervised learning category. So, whereby the local region is identified in a sequence of recursive splits in a smaller number of steps. And decision tree is composed of internal decision node. and the terminal leaves and each decision node m implements a test function which a discrete outcomes labeling the branch so in the previous example we have seen two branches one is fit and unfit and the decision tree consists of uh, decision nodes that is age less than 13 and whether that person eat a lot of pizza or whether that person will exercise or not so here we given an input that is in the previous example our input is age less than 13 at each node a test is applied and one of the branch is taken depending on the outcome so the process start at the root and repeated recursively until a leaf node is hit at which point the value written in the leaf constitutes the output so in the previous example we have seen age less than 13 then yes or no for the yes case we have go for further that is whether that person eat a lot of pizza then if your answer is no then you can say the person is unfit otherwise it is fit 
okay so that uh, your leaf knot which will indicate your class or it will indicate the labels so in this slide you can see one decision tree for play tennis this is one of the standard data set that is play tennis and here uh, i have chosen my root node as outlook and we have three uh, features like sunny overcast and rain if overcast is there then i can say uh, the play uh, the person can play the tennis for sunny and rain i can't take a decision so i need to go for further iteration that i need to check uh, further more features so for sunny case i have to check the features like humidity and if the humidity is high means i can't play the tennis but humidity is normal the person can play the tennis and the next i can check for wind also if the wind is strong then the person can play the tennis if the wind is weak uh, the person can play the tennis so this is a standard decision tree for play tennis but here i have uh, used it the outlook feature is my root node so how i can choose a root node so uh, that will discuss in the coming slide there are three algorithms are available in order to determine the root node of a decision tree that is one is uh, id3 algorithm and one is c4.5 algorithm and third one is cart so according to the machine learning syllabus they have mentioned uh, the id3 algorithm and cart so we'll discuss more details about id3 and cart algorithm in the coming slides the next is the different types of decision tree so there are two type of decision tree one is classification tree and regression tree the classification tree means the tree models where the target variable can take a discrete set of values are called classification tree so in the previous example we have discussed uh, one classification tree and our uh, output is class labels that person is fit or not but in the case of play tennis yes or no so this type of uh, examples are called classification tree but in the case of regression tree the decision tree where the target variables can take a continuous value instead of taking the discrete value it will be a real numbers suppose if you want to determine the price of a house or uh, what is the price of a gold after 5 years or uh, a patient's length of stay in a hospital so in order to determine a continuous value you can approach a regression tree but most of the case we have used classification tree but also we can uh, solve the regression problem by using the regression tree also so this is in one example for <coughs> classification tree here you can see the different class labels like mammal reptile fish amphibian and bird and there are four features gives birth aquatic animal aerial animal and has legs based on that i'm going to classify whether it is a mammal or reptile and fish amphibian and bird so here i am not going to use any algorithm i'm doing it manually and let's see how we can uh, do the decision tree or how we can construct the decision tree by manually so here i have split my data set based on the first feature that is gives birth is yes so s yes in one separate one and no in separate one so i have split the data set into two so from this gives birth is equal to yes i can't take a decision whether it is a mammal bird or fish why because based on that uh, if gives birth is yes it can be mammal it can be bird it can be fish so i need to check further more feature that is aquatic animal so aquatic animal which is no no means i can say the decision the class label is mammal but i can't take the decision uh, in the case of bat the aquatic animal is no it can be act like a bird so i can't take that decision and if gives birth is yes and aquatic animal is yes then i can take a decision that is fish i need not to go for further feature but in the case of um, mammal and bird i need to consider one more feature that is an aerial animal so here you can see gives birth is yes aquatic animal is no and aerial animal is no then i can take a decision mammal if gives birth is yes the aquatic animal is no and the aerial animal is yes means i can take a decision bird so similarly for the 
next category also so gives birth as no and the aquatic animal i can split again further into yes no semi and in the certain case of yes i can take a decision uh, i can't take a decision so for the semi case i can take a decision because we need not to consider all the aquatic animal semi it can be classified as an amphibian but in the case of no we have to check one more feature that is an aerial animal and for the case of geese birth is no and the aquatic animal is yes means yeah i can take a decision it is a fish so in the previous slide i have already explained how we can classify it so here you can see for the geese birth is no aquatic animal is yes then i can take a decision the class label is fish and here geese birth is no aquatic animal is semi and aerial animal is no means i can take a decision it is a amphibian if geese birth is no aquatic animal is no and aerial animal no means this is a reptile and aerial animal is yes means this class label is bird so every time we have to look for further more feature if one feature is not satisfying so if your feature is uh, more than 10000 features you have uh, looking then at that time uh, in order to construct a decision tree is very time consuming and tedious task so you can't do it manually so definitely you need a proper algorithm to construct a decision so this is the example for that previous data set that is uh, gives birth as yes then i can't take a decision so i have to check for whether it is aquatic yes then i can say it's a fish if it is no then i have to check one more feature that is whether it is aerial yes means it is bird no means it is mammal then for gives birth as no then i have to check whether it is aquatic yes means it is a fish then semi means it is amphibian no means i need to check further feature that is whether it is aerial or not and if it is yes means then i can say the decision it is a bird if it is no then i can take a decision reptile so this is a A, a final decision tree that we constructed manually uh, from the uh, previous data set so this is algorithm for classification of that vertebrates so in the previous decision tree we have constructed so the same thing here uh, we have written a algorithm based on the if else statement so if k birth is equal to yes then we have to check further more if aquatic equal to yes then return the class is fish else we have to construct one more if that is if aerial equal to yes then return the class is bird else we can return the class is mammal so this is for if uh, gives birth is equal to yes and the next one if aquatic equal to yes then return the class is fish and if aquatic equal to semi then return class amphibian else if aerial equal to yes then return class equal to amphibian else return class is reptile so this is a uh, algorithm for the classification of vertebrates so next is the feature selection method if a data set consists of n attributes then deciding which attribute is to be placed at the root at different levels of the tree as an internal node is one of the complicated problem as i mentioned in the previous slide if we have the 1000 or maybe 10000 features for a large data set then we have to choose which feature will be the root node that is one of the complicated problem so the most important problem in implementing the decision tree algorithm is deciding which features are to be considered as the root node and at each level so in order to determine uh, the features selection uh, we have different selection measures are available so the first one called information gain and second one is called gini index and third one is gain ratio so three measures which using in different uh, algorithm so information gain is using an id3 uh, gini index for c4.5 and uh, c4.5 and the gain ratio uh, and uh, 
gain ratio just use it for cart and uh, see for 0.5 algorithm also so let's see more details about the different filter selection measures in the coming slide so let's see what is entropy entropy is a measure is using in information gain so entropy is uh, indicating uh, as a measure of the impurity in a data set and uh, Suppose if your data set contain only a single class, then we can say it is a purity. Then if you have only a single class, this is called a pure class. And if your data set contain multiple classes, that means it contains some impurity. So the entropy is measured in bits and if there are only two possible classes, the entropy value can range from 0 to 1. Suppose if your data set contain 10 classes, then your entropy ranges from 0 to log 2n. So your base is log 2, that is you should uh, point out. So most commonly we have using the log as base 10, but here it is base 2. So suppose if you have 10 classes, then your range from 0 to log base 2 10. So the minimum value indicates that sample is completely homogeneous. And the maximum value indicates that the data is diverse as possible. So, as I already mentioned, entropy is the measure of impurity in a data set. So, impurity means it is the measure of the randomness in the information being processed. So, if your entropy is high, the higher the entropy means harder it is to draw any conclusion from the information. So, if your entropy is high means you can't take a decision which one will be the root node. So if your entropy is low means you can take the decision appropriately. In this line, I'm going to explain what is entropy. So entropy, as I mentioned earlier, entropy is the measure of impurities in a data set. So how we can calculate the entropy? The equation is sigma i is equal to 1 to c minus p i into log p i where the base is 2. Let's see what is c. So c is the number of the class labels and p i is the proportion of the examples in s and s is the data set. So this is an example of how to calculate the entropy. So in this uh, data set you can see our uh, aim is whether the person is able to play the tennis based on the features like outlook, temperature, humidity and wind. So how we can calculate the entropy is, the entropy the equation is minus P i into log P i. So here we need to consider the total number of yes and total number of no. So here you can see the total number of yes is 9 and the total number of sample is 14. So minus 9 by 14 into log base 2 9 by 14 minus 5 by 14 into log base 2 5 by 14. So your entropy will be equal to 0 0.9405. So this is a way to calculate the entropy. That is we need to calculate how many numbers of yes, how many numbers of no. Then take the total probability. Then the logarithm of that probability then you can calculate the entropy. So in this slide, I'm going to explain the important uh, measures to calculate the calculate the root node of a tree. The first measure is information gain. So in order to calculate the information gain, we need a certain parameter called entropy. So let's see what is information gain. So information gain tell us how important a given attribute of the feature vector is. So we will use it to decide the ordering of attributes in the node of a decision tree. Let's see what is information gain and how we can calculate the information gain. So the equation of gain is gain of s comma a which is equal to entropy of s minus the sigma values of a then we can calculate the probability that modulus of sv divided by s into entropy of sv. Let's see what is SV, what is S. So SV is the subset of S with A is equal to B. And where A be the feature and S be the set of example. And the values of A be the set of all possible values of A. So this gain can be computed. Take the entropy minus take the probability of SV uh, by S and 
multiply with the entropy of the SO. Let's see one example for uh, information gain. So we have already considered one data called play tennis and we are going to find the corresponding information gain for the same data set. So how we can calculate the gain? The value of the attribute outlook are sunny, overcast and rain. So we are going to find the gain of outlook and we have to calculate the entropy for v is equal to sunny, v is equal to overcast and v is equal to rain. So let's see how we can calculate the information gain. In the previous slide I have mentioned we need to calculate the entropy of sunny, entropy of overcast and entropy of rain. For the sunny case we need to consider how many yes and how many no. So for the sunny case we have p s and 2 no. So the uh, uh, entropy will be minus p i into log p i. So here it is minus 3 by 5 into log 3 by 5 minus 2 by 5 into log 2 by 5. So uh, it will be 0 0.9710. Next we have to calculate the entropy of overcast. So there is no only the s value. So we have to calculate the s samples only. That is minus 4 by 4 into log base to 4 by 4. The next is the entropy of rain which can be computed as minus 3 by 5 into log 3 by 5 minus 2 by 5 into log 2 by 5. So we have calculated the entropy of sunny, overcast and rain. The next we have to calculate the gain as I already mentioned uh, the equation of gain. That is entropy of S minus S of sunny divided by modulus of S into entropy of sunny minus S of overcast divided by modulus of S into entropy of overcast minus S of rain divided by S into entropy of the rain. So we have already calculated the entropy of sunny, entropy of overcast, entropy of rain. So substitute the value and you will get uh, 0.2469. So let's see what is IDK algorithm. IDK algorithm is used for determining the root node of a decision tree. So ID3 stands for iterative dichotomizer tree and this algorithm is used to generate a decision tree and the ID3 algorithm was invented by Rose Kunlan. The ID3 follows the Occam Raser principle and here our aim is to create a smallest possible decision tree with the uh, less number of uh, iterations. You can see what is the important parameters or notations are commonly used in ID3 algorithm. S is the set of examples, C is the set of the class labels, F is the set of features, A is an arbitrary feature or it is attribute and values the set of values of the feature A and V is an, an arbitrary value of A and SV is the set of example with A equal to V and root is the root node of the T. Let's see the algorithm for ID3. So first step is you have to create a root node for the tree and the next is if all the examples in S are positive then we have to return a single node tree root with the label positive. And suppose if all the examples are negative, then we have to create a return a single node uh, tree root with the label minus 1. And suppose if your number feature is 0, then you have to return a single node tree root with a label equal to the most common class label. Otherwise, we have to consider the feature with highest information gain. So how we can calculate the information gain I have already explained. Then I says assign this A to the root node in the decision tree and we have to repeat this and add a new branch below the root corresponding to B. And suppose if your SV is empty then below this branch add a leaf node with the label equal to the most common class labels in the set. Otherwise below this branch Add the subtree formed by applying the same algorithm ID3 to the values ID3 that is S, C and F minus A. That is we have to subtract each features uh, from this A. See how 
we can implement ID3 algorithm. Let's see one problem. So this is the same data set that we already explained that is a play tennis. We are going to implement our, we are going to construct a description tree by using ID3 algorithm. Let's see the solution of ID3 algorithm. The first is a create a root node for the tree. The second step is note that not all examples are positive and not all examples are negative. Also, the number of features is not zero. The third step, we have to decide which feature is to be placed at the root node. For this, we have to calculate the information gain corresponding to each of the four features. In this step, we are going to find the information gain and we need to look for the highest information gain. So we have to calculate the gain of outlook, gain of temperature, gain of humidity and gain of wind. In the next step, we have to calculate the highest information gain. So the gain of outlook is 0.24, gain of temperature is 0 0.0293, gain of humidity is 0 0.151, gain of wind is 0 0.048. So, we have to select the maximum gain. So, out of this, the maximum gain is outlook. So, outlook feature will be the. So, in this slide, you can see uh, the tree construction. That is, here I have chosen outlook as the root node. Then, we have to consider sunny, overcast, and rain. In this slide, <laughs> we are going to consider the next feature that is outlook equal to sunny. So here you can see for the outlook equal to sunny, we have five samples and you have to calculate the S of 1 equal to 5 and we are going to find outlook equal to sunny, what is a feature for temperature, what is a value for humidity and what is a gain value for wind and we have to choose the highest one. So let's see how we can calculate in the coming slide. So in this slide, I am going to calculate the gain of outlook uh, which is equal to sunny given temperature. So the, it can be calculated as the entropy of uh, sunny minus the temperature is equal to hot divided by S of 1 into entropy of S of temperature is equal to hot. Similarly, uh, for the temperature, we have three value temperature equal to hot, temperature equal to mild and temperature equal to cool. So, its value become 0 0.5709. Let's see the solution for ID3 algorithm. The next one, we have to consider the humidity. And for the humidity, we have two value, high and normal value. And substitute it, you will get 0 0.970. So, in this slide, uh, you can calculate uh, the gain of uh, that uh, sunny versus wind. So, wind have two values, weak and strong. So, overall uh, entropy minus S of wind by S of 1, S of wind is equal to strong. Calculate the entropy of S of wind is equal to weak, S of wind is equal to strong. So, substitute it, you will get the value 0 0.0110. So, this is an exact decision tree for the data set play tennis. Here you can see. For this rainy case, we have to consider one more feature that is a humidity. And the humidity is got the highest value. That is why we have chosen humidity as the root node. Then uh, uh, humidity is also having high value and a normal value. Then you have to check if it is high means you can't play the tennis. If it is high means, sorry, if it is normal means you can play the tennis. So this is a complete decision tree. And here the root node is outlook. In the previous slide, we have explained uh, the gain ratio. And in this slide, I'm going to explain the next uh, measure that can be used for the feature selection, that is Gini index. So how you can calculate the Gini index? The standard equation for Gini index is 1 minus sigma i is equal to 1 to r pi the whole square. So let's see what is PA and what is R. So consider the data set S having R class labels that is indicated by C1 to CR. And PA be the proportion of examples having the class label CA. 
So the Gini index is 1 minus sigma i is equal to 1 to r pi the whole square. This is a sample problem. We are going to find the Gini index for this following data set. So let us see the data in a table. There are four class labels you can see here amphibian, bird, fish, and mammal, and reptile. So let's see number of examples with class labels amphibian, which is equal to 3, and for bird, it is equal to 2, for fish, it is equal to 2, mammal, it is equal to 2, reptile is equal to 1, and the total number of examples is equal to 10. So for the Gini index for this particular data set can be calculated 1 minus sigma i is equal to 1 to r pi the whole square. So it is equal to 1 minus 3 by 10 the whole square minus 2 by 10 the whole square minus 2 by 10 the whole square minus 2 by 10 the whole square minus 1 by 10 the whole square. So it will be equal to 0.78. So next is how we can calculate Gini split index. So let S be a set of examples, A be a feature, S be be the subset of S with A is equal to V and values of A be the set of all possible values of A. So the Gini split index with the relative to A to S can be defined as Gini of split of F comma A which is equal to the summation of values of A. Uh, that modulus of SB divided by modulus of S into Gini of SB, where the modulus of S denotes the number of elements in S. So the attribute that provides the smallest Gini split is chosen to the split node. Need to enumerate all the possible splitting point for each attribute. So one thing uh, we need to notice that is here we choose the lowest value. The earlier one, we have to choose the largest one for the information gain. For the Gini split index, we have to choose the smallest Gini splitter. So that is the difference between the gain ratio and the Gini split. Next is gain ratio. Let S be a set of example. A be a feature having C different values. And let the set of values of A be denoted by values A. And we define the information gain of A relative to S denoted by the gain of S comma A, which can be computed as entropy of S minus sigma values of A into modulus of SB divided by modulus of S into entropy of SB. And we define the split information of A related to S denoted by a split information and which can be computed as minus sigma i is equal to 1 to c modulus of si into s into log p is to si into divided by s. So where s1, se are the c subset of examples resulting from a partitioning s into c values of the attribute a. Let's see what does gain ratio. The gain ratio of A relative to S is defined as the gain ratio of S comma A which is equal to gain of S comma A divided by the split information bracket S comma A. Let's see one example. The gain ratio for the attribute gives birth. So the gives birth, the total number of sample is 10. And the entropy is 2.2464 and gain is 0 0.5709. So the next step you have to calculate the split information of S comma A. You have to calculate for the S and for the no. S yes by S into log base 2 into S of yes by S. For S of no you have to calculate and you will get 0 0.9710. The next step you have to calculate the gain ratio. So the gain ratio is calculated gain divided by the split info. So the final answer is 0 0.5880. Let's see what is regression rate. So I have already explained there are two types of class, uh, decision tree. One is classification tree and regression tree. So regression problem is the problem of determining a relation between one or more independent variables and an output variable 
which is a real continuous variable and then using the relation to predict the values of the dependent variable. So regression problems are in general related to the prediction of numeric values of variables. And here we using a tree for making predictions of numeric variables is called a prediction tree or a regression tree. Let's see one example how we can find a regression tree. We have the data x1, x2 and y. So the first step we have to split the table as x1 is equal to 6. So you will get the value 1, 3, 4, 2, 0 and 6, 10, 15, 7, 16. The next step you are going to split the data for the feature x2. So in this step we are going to split the table for the feature x2 which is equal to 21 and x2 is equal to 22. So you will get x1, x2, 1, 0, x2 is 12, 17 and for the second table x2 is 23, 21 and 35. Similarly for the second table also uh, you will get uh, 10, 12 and 27, 23 and 27. Finally this one will be the regression tree for the uh, data that is x1 less than 6, x1 greater than or equal to 6. At x1 less than 6 we have to split again, we have to check for x2 where x2 is less than 21 and x2 is greater than or equal to 21. For x2 less than 21 the average information is 12.5 and x2 is greater than or equal to 21 the information is 13.17. For x2 less than 23, the information is 28.5. For x2 greater than or equal to 23, the information is 19.5. So, in this video, we have discussed uh, the important topics in Module 4 Machine Learning course. Uh, the important topic, uh, first one is decision tree and the different algorithms like ID3. And we have discussed uh, the different information measures. And the card will discuss in the uh, next video and also we have discussed the regression tree and the different types of uh, decision tree that is classification tree and the regression tree and the measures like information gain, entropy and gain ratio. So thank you all for watching this video.